Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Mirror's Edge. So, um, when I ended the game last time, I actually, when I ended the last session, I actually quit the game. And uh, it turned out that I hadn't actually reached a save point since um, before I walked into the computer room where all the computers were. And so I basically had to fight that battle again to get to this point. And, um, and then also, as I started recording, uh, I got a phone call. So I actually had to stop recording and now I'm starting recording again. Anyway, so here we are. Um, I've got to drop the gun now. Oh, I wish I didn't have to drop that gun. That's like the gun to end all... Where'd it go? Oh, there it is. So now I'm just going to go over here. <sighs> Basically, that just ensures that you can't take a gun with you, I guess. This, I think, is going to be the final battle. Yeah, this is the final battle. So this is going to be the end of the game, assuming I can make it through here. Basically, the final boss fight against the final boss. Jackknife, asshole. Hello, Faith. Jack, if you couldn't. Attitudes like that, I did. Well, that's exactly why I could. Who's behind this? Let's just say I know who the bigger fish are. Callahan. Why us? We're no threat. Classic warfare. Break the lines of communication. Shoot the messengers. Without hope. And without the runners, your clients, those who just won't let go of the old city will be cut off. Vulnerable. Then this city can clean up the last of its dregs. So this is just the start. I prefer to think of it as an end. Still, you did a remarkably good job of coaxing out all those loose ends surrounding Pope's demise. It's why you're still alive. Okay, here I thought we could have done better than that. You can't live on the edge all your life, Faith. Sooner or later, you have to jump. Yeah. I have to jump. Watch me jump. Bye. Sayonara, sucker. basically the game. Now of course it sets it up for uh, a sequel, but the uh, new game that's coming out, Catalyst, is actually going to be a prequel slash reboot. So it's going to show how Faith gets started, I guess. I don't know too many details about it. So the final boss fight wasn't really a fight. It was more, uh, just get around the obstacle, make the jump, and then watch the cutscene. So, uh, anyway, as the credits roll, uh, I'm just gonna ramble on a bit about the game and, uh, kind of go over again some of the things I really liked about it, some of the things that I didn't like about it. Probably not going to be a whole lot that you haven't already heard if you've been watching up to this point. But, you know, if you want to continue listening to my voice, that's fine. If not, you can go ahead and end the video now. And, uh, I really appreciate you watching up to this point. And um, I'm glad I was able to get back to this game and finish it. Uh, it's been a long time since I had uh, paused it. But now it's done. And I can do on other things. Anyway, so, 
on the game here. First of all, things I like in no particular order. Well, I thought the visual design. That's the film before I even get into it. I'm probably not going to disagree with just about anything out there. I mean, there's... This has been said probably so many times. So many times. So many times. So many times. Visual design I thought was outstanding. That sort of sterile white with primary colors. It, it was really striking. It was like nothing really we've seen before, or at least in a really long time. Because you know, this game came out. Um, you know, and even now, the trend is you know, these complicated, dark um, environments. Not very bright, you know, lots of shadows and things like that. Dark colors, browns, maybe greens, or, or you know, not even, you know, not even primary colors, you know, except maybe an accent here or there. Like, um, like another game that I really enjoyed, and that I'm really looking forward to the sequel for is um, Deus Ex: Human Revolution. And that game was awesome, and its its visual design was very striking too. But it was dark, and everything was tinted yellow. This was very bright and, you know, had all the different primary colors. Um, of course, the colors, you know, the red, would be used to, to know this is a thing of interest. This is a place that you can go. This is a, a thing you can grab onto or something you can jump off of or a door. Oh, okay, there's going to be a new report. According to a Callahan staff member, a security breach led to a series of catastrophic outages in the shard many public protection systems causing havoc not just public at the shard, systems. but throughout the city. Surveillance. The suspects in the act are none other than the former CPF officer and accused murderer Kate Connors and her sister Faith Connors. Although the scope and precise cause of the outages is as yet unclear, many troubling questions have emerged in their wake including the role of the so-called runners in the destabilization of city operations. In the aftermath of the incident, local security firm Pirandello Kruger will be assisting the CPF. PK and the mayor's office have also recommended mobile phone and email be used sparingly until additional security measures have been deployed. In other words, we can't monitor compromised. Like we can't monitor your stuff, so don't use it. Are currently unknown. Anyway, so yeah, the red was, the red denotes you know, something you can do, something you can go, something you can interact with. Uh, anyway, and then of course the other colors just really made things bright. Oh, we're going to get something else? No, okay, the song's going to fade out and we're going to pick up with a different tune. So, um, the running, when you, when they had environments where you could really get going and go up and over things and slide under things and jump off of walls and stuff like that, was really cool. You get into the flow, and um, when you when you get into the flow and it turns blue like that, that means that you're actually building up uh, slow time uh, ability. So you'll notice that a co your, if you remember a couple times where I was fighting um, bad guys, uh, everything seemed to slow down, and that's a, that's an ability you can trigger. And I I underutilized it. It makes it a lot easier to fight guys, and I should have used it more, but. Yeah, I'm probably never going to play the game again, so uh, maybe in the sequel, or the prequel, you know, maybe in uh, Mirror's Edge, Catalyst, and that will be there, and maybe even more useful. Um, but once you get running, and you get into the flow of things, it can be really cool, you know, that the parkour, the, the free running, um, the ability to traverse your environment, uh, effectively and in interesting ways it was a lot of fun. Um, of course, the one thing that I disliked most about the game, which is the thing that was pretty much universally disliked by everybody who played it, was the combat. Uh, there, are, there, there is an achievement that you can get in this game called Test of Faith, which is you get that when you complete the game without killing anybody. And I think, although I am not sure, I don't remember for sure, but I think when I played this on the Xbox 360, I actually did get that achievement. Um, I'd have to look at my achievements on Xbox.com and uh, see if it's there, and I'm not going to do that right now, but I think I was able to do it. But for this playthrough, I didn't want to mess around. I wanted to get through it 
And so consequently, I did pick up guns and I did shoot dudes. And that allowed me to get through the game a little bit more quickly, even though, even on easy mode. Let's see. Uh, other times, there were there were some times where you know some of the platforming gets frustrating. There's uh, some stuff. There's a few places in here which you may have noticed where it was really unforgiving. There was really you know there was a relatively small tolerance for error. So that if you were just a little bit off, you'd fall or not make your catch or not make your jump or whatever. Um, another thing that I did like about it, and you did see this a few times in the playthrough, is that sometimes there's multiple ways to get through things. Now, that's one of the things that Deus Ex Human Revolution and um, also the upcoming uh, Deus Ex Mankind Divided uh, is really good at is giving you multiple ways to get from point A to point B, giving you multiple ways to uh, complete your objective. So you can either go in guns blazing, or you can stealth around, or you can go through ducts, or sneak around, you can knock people out, stuff like that. Um, when I played Deus Ex Human Revolution the first time through, uh, I basically maintained a no kill policy up until one particular point in the game, and then I thought, okay, well, Given who the character is that I'm playing, um, he would actually start, he would actually throw that all the way and start actually shooting guys. And so I, I played it that way. Um, but that's that's a different game. Let's see, what, el what else do I like about this? Uh, let's see, the, um, well, not just the environments and the environment, like, there, there are times when you're looking out over the city and it's, and it's, almost breathtaking you know the water looks so pure it's really kind of interesting to look at this because you know you think about and again here's me rambling again um, you look at this environment you look at this city everything's clean everything's sterile you know it looks very nice but it doesn't look very alive you know everything is cleaned up everything has been you know there's no litter there's no trash there's no graffiti um, but the kind of oppressive regime that is required in order to have a city like that is it worth it you know the game would seem to be indicating that no it is not and and I would have to agree with it I mean the kind of um, authoritarianism that would be required to have a city like this would be so oppressive as to be almost, well, I wouldn't go so far as to say slavery, but it would be a very restrictive environment. You know, I notice it's like surveillance everywhere. The computers, they monitor all the communications. You know, as they say, don't you, you know, our, our, our security systems have been compromised, so don't use your phone, don't use email. Well, of course, it's not for your safety that they don't want it, that they want you to refrain from doing that. It's because they can't monitor it right now. So, they're going to lie to you and tell you that they want you to refrain from using these technologies for reason A when it's really reason B. So um, it, you know, it's social commentary, maybe a little bit heavy-handed, but uh, it it definitely is something to think about. And I think I've pretty much run out of things to say, so um, I'm going to go ahead and end it here. Uh, if you have watched this whole series from the beginning, I really appreciate you sticking with me on this. And uh, I really appreciate that you came back and uh, started watching the videos once I picked up the game again. Um, I don't know what my next Let's Play is going to be. So, um, I have games that I'm currently involved with. Let's see, I'm in the middle of Dishonored. Um, I've played a little bit of Fallout 4. I'm not going to do a Let's Play on Fallout 4 because... That would just be ridiculous, and there's so many other people out there are doing it, and so many other people out there who are better at it than I am are doing it. And in fact, you know, I would actually recommend checking out some of the interesting ones. Like there's a there's one that I heard about where a guy went through the game without killing anybody, and that is really really difficult to do. And in fact, it actually breaks the game. He actually had to work around a bug in the game that was triggered by getting to a particular point without killing anybody. Because the game actually expects you to have killed certain people by the time you get there. And uh, so, if you don't, then it, it gets screwed up. You know, things like that 
I think are you know really interesting. Uh, just a straight playthrough of Fallout 4 is I don't think going to be very interesting, and it would take too long, and I, I'd probably just not. I'd, I'd run out of stuff to say because it would take so long to begin with. So, anyway, um, yeah, pretty much that's it. That was Mirror's Edge. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks again for watching, and we'll catch you in the next round. <laughs>